Hey, this is Simon from Daslight, and welcome to another exciting video tutorial on Daslight 4. Today we're going to be looking at creating a customized screen. So adding our own buttons, faders, color wheels, pan tilt grids, and then controlling that using the show mode in Daslight, and also using our Easy Remote app for Android and iOS smartphones and tablets. So let's dive right in. We've got the Daslight demo show, which is now available on the website. So uh, if you head over to the downloads page of daslight.com, you can take this Daslight demo show if you want to play about with it yourself. Um, so we've got some beam scenes, some color effects scenes, some gobos, some moves, and some flashes. Until now, we've mainly been working on the live screen. So everything's nice and neatly laid out. You've got your palettes down here if you need to change the color. You've got your scenes over here. You've got the three views we were talking about to make it small if we need it small or make it large if we need a dimmer and a speed fader on all the scenes. But we've also got a fourth view over here called show mode. And what show mode allows you to do is to create an entirely customized screen. And this is great for like a club install if you want something very specific looking without all these editing tools. Or even if you're just doing a disco and you know you want to be concentrating on playing your music, you don't want all these other buttons getting in the way. So um, show mode allows you to only put the items you need. The other great thing about show mode is that it also works on your smartphone and tablet. So you can get your Android or iOS, iPad, iPhone, Android tablet, Android phone, and you can actually control Daslight directly from your tablet. Um, this also works with multiple smartphones and tablets as well. So imagine you're doing an architectural installation and you want to be able to put a tablet on the wall. Or imagine you're inside a club and maybe you want a tablet in the DJ booth for the DJ to control Daslight, but then you want a different design behind the bar for the bar guy to control Daslight. Now obviously the DJ guy, you might want to put some movement buttons and some more advanced functionality. But for the bar guy, maybe you just want to switch the lights on and off and change the color or whatever. So let's make a start. Um, we did touch on show mode briefly in the previous tutorial where we added these uh, color effects. And what we did was we held Alt on PC or Option on Mac and we clicked the button. And that automatically added it over to the show mode. Now, this doesn't only apply to scenes. So uh, I can add my blinder, for example, and my fast strobe. Go over to show mode. Here's my blinder, and here's my fast strobe. But this actually also applies anywhere in the software. So for example, imagine I wanted to add this master dimmer. I can alt and click the master dimmer, or option click the master dimmer. Head over to show mode, and now I have a master dimmer in show mode. It's that easy. Imagine I want to change the speed of the rainbow effect. Go over to live, go over to the speed, which is here, alt or option click the fader, over to show mode, and now we've got a fader to change the speed. A show mode screen can also be edited, so right now you see these are all fixed, they're all in fixed places, but if I go up and click this button here, this now allows me to edit, so I can drag these around. I can resize them. Maybe I want a vertical fader instead of a horizontal fader for the speed here. Maybe I want it a bit thicker so I can see the full name. And perhaps I want my master dimmer over here. So we can make it like this. Or put it up here. Make it vertical again. I could perhaps do something like this. And this is great if you've got a touch screen because basically you can remove the editor mode and you could touch these with your finger. You can also put it in full screen here. So if I click that button, it's basically just gonna put this whole show mode into full screen. You can also lock the show mode just like you can lock the live screen so if you want to if you need to go away from your computer and you don't want people touching the programming that you've made you can lock your screen like so 
We also have this button here. This actually allows you to shut down your computer directly from show mode. So if you want a quick way to get out of Dash Lite, shut down the computer, um, very popular for installs as well because uh, you can lock the software just on show mode and have the customer click the shut down button to shut down the computer. Um, you might notice by default it doesn't do anything. That's because we disabled this button by default. To enable this button you have to go over to the software preferences like this and then you have to click enable shutdown button and the reason we added this checkbox was because people kept clicking it by accident they click the button a message comes up it says are you sure you want to shut down your computer a lot of people weren't reading the message they just click yes and then the computer shut down and they had to start it back up again so for that reason we disabled this button over here um, by the way you can minimize this dock as well if I click here we can minimize it like so and we can also undock it with this button here if we want to be able to float it on top somewhere else. So you may have noticed when we were in the editor, we saw this white dotted line. Now basically everything inside this line will be sent to a smartphone or tablet. The app's called Easy Remote and it's available for free on Google Play and the Apple App Store. And all you need to do is just download the app and make sure you're on the same Wi-Fi network as Dazlight. As long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network as Dazlight and you've got the app open, you should be able to see this on your smartphone or tablet. As you move these like so, you should be able to see them moving on your smartphone and tablet as well. Now, obviously, different smartphones and tablets all have different sizes and the app will automatically stretch everything so it fits the smartphone and tablet and to kind of help you use the right size we created some different presets here so if I go over here you see we've got the iPhone 5, the iPhone 6, the Galaxy, the Nexus and we'll try and update this once in a while so it's always got the latest popular devices so imagine I wanted to just create something for the iPhone 6 or iPhone 6s. This happens to be similar to the default resolution and this is the resolution here or perhaps I want to create something for the iPad Pro. So you see the iPad Pro is a little taller than it is wide if you've got it in landscape mode. So you see this dotted line has actually moved down so it really helps you position your components and then see them in the correct place once you open that Easy Remote app on your smartphone or tablet. If I go back over to the iPhone, so we've got the iPhone 6 and 6s. Now these buttons are going to look really small on a little iPhone screen. Obviously we can go over here and we can make them bigger like this, but this involves resizing everything which is a little bit of a pain. So what we have here are scaling values that we can select. So at the moment we've got the scale set to 2. Now if we set the scale just to 1 you see it shrinks the borders and this will consequently make the buttons look bigger on the iPhone. Obviously we need to change a few things, maybe this button needs to go over here. These faders no longer fit so I need to make them a little bit smaller. There we go. So this is a nice way to very quickly arrange your buttons so they're going to look nice as soon as you open that Easy Remote app. We have different pages as well so if I go up here and click this little plus button we're now on page 2. Now as you see you can actually have different scales for different pages. So we've got page 1 here, this could be my iPhone, you can double click to rename. So this could be my mini simple iPhone view, then I can go to page 2 and perhaps this is for my larger iPad. Let's select the, oh, I don't know, maybe we've got an iPad Air. So here's the setup for the iPad Air. And what you could do is you could add some simple functions that you can put on your iPhone and then perhaps make more of a complicated show with like color wheels and more scenes and presets which you can then access from your iPad. Um, so that's something else you can do in show mode. 
as well as alt and clicking a scene or alt and clicking something else on the live screen, you can actually alt and click a preset as well. So imagine I want some buttons to set some gobos for these moving heads. I go over to gobo here and I just need to alt and click these gobos. And as you see, it automatically adds a button with the correct icon in show mode. And this will also appear on your tablet and smartphone as well with the correct icon. So now you can very quickly activate different gobos over here. And it works with all kinds of presets, so I could add some for the colored gobos. Let's move these perhaps over here. You could add some gobo rotation presets. And you can even add a color wheel as well. So I could have a color wheel like this to control the moving heads. Pan and tilt grid. And as well as actually controlling lights, you can add certain software functions as well. So imagine we got some groups. Now I don't actually have any groups at the moment, so let's just create some groups. So I've got a group here for my um, moving heads. I'll just give that a name. left RGBs right RGBs and again I can just alt and click these groups And now I've got groups to select the left RGBs, the right RGBs. Let me just go to the general tab so we can see everything all at once. So now I can select my left RGBs, my right RGBs, and my moving heads directly from the smartphone or tablet using show mode. A few other features we've got in show mode. If I just unlock again, we can actually edit any of these buttons or we can add a new empty button so if I add a new empty button like so we get the editor open and this allows us to edit everything within this button so we can give it a name so let's create a button perhaps it's going to trigger scene one so we can go scene one uh, let's have it triggering scene two as well so I'll call it scene one plus two And then if we go down here, this is the actual association. So this is what's going to happen when you click this button. And um, we can edit it down here. And I can basically go scenes. So maybe scene one uh, is the on for the beam. And then I can add another button, which is perhaps going to trigger a rainbow effect. Like so. Let me just check this one. I think I just missed. Ah, here we go. Play stop. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, so we can play, we can stop, or we can play and stop, which is what we want to do in this case. You can choose a, a file. So imagine you want to add a custom image, like one of these ones. You can add your own file for when the button's pressed, and then you can add another file for when the button's released as well. Or you can choose from our icon library. So we've got tons of icons here to choose from. And we've got our preset icons over here. You can change the text size, text color, button color, and the size of the button. So if I click OK. So everything's off at the moment. And when I click this button, it's going to switch my lights on 
and it's going to play the rainbow effect at the same time. And that's with the click of one button. And we often get asked um, by Daz Light customers, oh, how can I activate several different scenes or several different effects at the same time with a single click of a button? And this is a great way to do that. So just to recap, we added the button over here. Then we edited the button. By the way, to edit a button, you can double click it or you can right click and select show configuration. And then the configuration window pops up here and we've got our various different associations. So here we've got scene on and here we've got scene rainbow. And if I want to edit that, I can just click down here and I can see the various properties here. In this window, you can also see what else is available. So if I go to shortcuts, for example, you've got a uh, shortcut group. So we've got scene shortcuts, add a scene, play a scene, stop a scene. So in fact, you could even create an easy remote button, which is going to add a new scene. Got some live shortcuts. So, you know, these snapshots we were talking about before, you can do that. You can even lock the screen from your tablet or smartphone as well. We've got the reset buttons, so if you want to reset live edits, that's possible. And you've also got BPM tap, this is really useful. So if you want to be able to have a big button in the corner of your phone or smartphone, tablet, you can just create a big tap button to keep everything locked in and synchronized. So that's basically show mode. In the next tutorial, we're going to be talking about MIDI.